Hello. Today I'm going to talk about the latest addition to the modulus framework, the ATR module, average true range. This one is a rather difficult and complex module as it is not your typical ATR. So as you can see, standard signal line to begin with. Now, what are the things that I require out of the Jackrabbit modulus framework? Is that each and every script that is added to it must be capable of being used by itself. If you're familiar with the ATR indicator, you know that it's not always possible to use it by itself. I had to really rethink this and come up with my own way all the way around of an ATR indicator that can be so standing. So here is my version of ATR. Let's zoom this in. There are 10 bands for selling, 10 bands for buying. The innermost yellow bands are the boundary one. The outermost bands are boundary 10. Boundary 10 is the default. And the rules that this framework follows is the price action must cross the boundary you have selected in your configuration. So it doesn't take into account anything except the crossings. So let's zoom this back out. The brighter the red or green, the stronger the signal. The part in the middle is kind of a no man's land where you're not going to make any profit. Let's take a look at the settings. So here are the settings, the standard indicator on indicator framework, your ticker symbol, Confirmation bias. You can have a source. You can choose your length and your look back smoothing period. And of course, the same thing exists for your confirmations, including being able to set the boundaries by which buying and selling must take place. So when you're working with your boundaries, the lower the boundary, the less profit you are going to make, but the faster it will trigger. The higher the boundary, the more profit you will make, but the slower it will trigger. And also there's a good chance that it might not trigger. So it's something you're going to need to look at as you evaluate your settings. So the look back period determines how smooth these ribbons are going to be. And of course, you can keep a signal for X number of candlesticks and invert the signal appropriately if necessary. For now, let's just see how this works out with a little experiment. We're going to pull from the Binance order book and we're going to pull BTC. So let's start here. Okay, so let's put this on the five minute chart. And now we're looking at BTC being pulled in relation to ETH. And here is the ribbon 
and the colors that match it. Now let's go one step further and let's force confirmation bias. And let's force this on the one hour chart for BTC. So when BTC has a signal on the one hour chart and ETH has a signal on the five minute chart, then and only then will it show up here. Let's see what it looks like at the 15 minute chart. Nothing. Let's try the 30 minute. And we have a buy signal. So here, this price action crossed the 10th buy boundary, which would be here. Mm -hmm. So let's zoom this in. So, you now have where it can buy on this bar. Now you can carry the signal, as I said, so forth. You can even go down to the one minute and see how it will work. Let's zoom it out. Let's see how it'll look on different combinations. So the average true range is from the least likely to the least likely. Those are the extremes. Going backwards here. Okay, and as you can see, not a lot of activity to one minute, but the five minute sometimes gives some interesting results. You see, though, how the price action stays pretty much in this channel, except for a few occasions when it breaks out. So let's go back in here and let's set this down to the five minute chart as well. Let's see if we can get a lineup between BTC and XMR. Get a confirmation and we did. Not only did we get a buy confirmation here, we got a sell confirmation here. Now notice that we are on Monero. Here's the prices for XMR. But what you're looking at here is the chart for BTC. So it's actually pulling both charts at once. And you can actually see between the two of them just how these signals line up. So you'll see a lot of interesting combinations with ATR that you will need to test out carefully to see what the results will be with relation to your risk assessment. Also, as noted, you can change the source for the primary indicator and for the confirmation, which would be right here. So as you're working with ATR, the average true range, you can use this to help you find outside boundaries from what would be a predictable price range. And that's what this part is in between the yellow is what's considered predictable pricing. When the pricing exceeds these limits, that's considered unpredictable behavior and opportunities for buys and sells.
Now notice right here, there's no signals. That's because this is crossing out. That's not necessarily a good place. And it doesn't line up with the chart up here for the confirmation bias. But if I was to turn this off, then you would see the signals here. But sometimes, though, you may not, depending upon the direction of the market. So if you do get a few cases like this that don't show up without confirmation bias, be sure to look at the results closely. The other thing is you will not get anything in here unless you're using boundary one. You don't get anything for signals unless it crosses explicitly the boundary that you are referencing. So let's pull this over a little. Okay, and we will come down. Okay, here's the boundaries. By boundary, let's set it to a one. Unlike Range Hunter, this is not a one or greater than. This is specifically and solely a one. Average true range is a bit different than a lot of the other indicators that use this similar boundary format. In the future that may change depending upon how well it works, but for now I've noticed it works best with absolute boundaries. Mainly because your channels are so small, you don't want a lot of whipsaw between the both of them. So there's boundary one. Let's see if we can get, say, boundary five. Okay, no boundary five over in this area. So be sure you play with the numbers, run your paper trader, and take some time working over all of your mathematics. Because this is a very unique take for ATR. It will take a little bit of getting used to and even if you have a powerful machine you may find a crunch for the numbers a little bit strong. This particular tablet has 16 processors in it and even sometimes with it mathematics with confirmation bias can be quite intense. So be aware to give yourself a little extra time with this one. Until next time.